Sam, have you heard? Our bank has been transferred to another owner? Luis asked his colleague. I hope this doesn't affect us. I wouldn't want to lose such a convenient job. And the salary is not bad. Of course, you get paid less than I do, but it's understandable. It's not the first year that I work here, and you're new to our business. Listen, why are you so grumpy? Gladys is sick. Doctors say that she needs emergency surgery. They are afraid that the metastases will further spread, but I don't have the money for her treatment. I wanted to talk to the doctor today, but they told me he had already resigned and is not responsible for anything anymore. What? He looked at Sam closely. Do you need a really big amount of money? A huge amount. No bank will give me that much. That's why I've taken this job, so that I can ask the management for help. I would work it off. I would do anything. You know, I can't lose my wife. We've been together for eight years. It's like a small life. And now it's going to finish. Oh, Luis, tell me, what should I do? I, I really don't know what to say. Maybe you should wait? I have no time to wait. Sam Wood lifted his head and looked at Luis, but he was looking somewhere else. What's there? asked Sam. He could see the entrance doors from behind his high counter, but Luis immediately spotted a poor old man in a sun-bleached hat who was hesitantly hovering around the door as if he didn't know who to approach. I don't know, some skank. Let me go meet him until the manager does. Otherwise, there'll be such a fuss about him, and it won't be good for me. Wait. Sam rose from his chair and also saw the old man. But Luis didn't hear him anymore. He confidently walked up to the guest and blocked his way. I think, said Luis, looking down at the old man, you came to the wrong place. You were probably looking for a cheap drinking establishment or a social services office. But, as you can see, it's a bank, and quite a prosperous one for that matter, so I'm asking you to leave. No, no, the old man rejected. I'm right where I should be. Pardon my appearance, I didn't have time to change. The thing is... Listen, if you think that I have as much time as to spend on someone like you, you are mistaken. Unlike you, I'm a busy man, and my time is money. So I ask you one more time, let me escort you to the exit. People are staring at us. And who do you think I am? The old man scoffed. Sorry, but you definitely don't look like a successful person, Louis laughed but the smile on his face immediately became a grimace of rage. He leaned towards the old man and hissed, Get out of here, now! He grabbed him by the shoulder and turned him towards the exit, but Sam approached them. Sorry, Mr. Harris, he said to Luis. I'm free and I can accept our client. Did I ask you what you can or cannot do? Luis snapped. I can deal with this beggar without your help. But if he's come to the bank, it means that he needs something, Sam insisted. You're right, young man, said the old man. That's what I'm trying to explain to Mr. Harris, but he won't listen to me. I'm sorry, mister, Sam smiled at him. What should I call you? My name's Edwards. Michael Edwards. Here, Mr. Edwards, said Sam. Let's go to my table, and then you can tell me what brought you here, and I will see how I can help you. Thank you, son, Michael replied, glancing at Harris, who had no choice but to follow Sam and his strange client. Listen, Wood, I understand that your wife is sick and you want to make more money, he said, but you're making a big mistake. We serve elite clients here, wealthy people. And if they see this skank, their opinion about the bank will change for the worse. Do you want us to be rejected by our loyal clients? No, Wood replied. I just want to do my job well. For me, all the clients are equal. 
And that's it. Oh my god, what nonsense! But Sam didn't listen to Luis and sat the old man in front of himself. And then he asked him how he could help. I need to see the director's office, Michael replied. Sorry, Mr. Edwards, Sam raised his eyebrows. Did I hear you right? Yes, the man nodded. I want to be shown to my office. Your office? Wood was taken aback by the answer. Luis, who was standing nearby, laughed loudly. Ha ha ha, you see? I told you, he's just a madman. Get him out of here before he does something crazy. And Sam, as much as I respect you, I will not defend you before the manager. This will teach you not to act willfully. I'm sure you'll get debonist for this. Luis turned around and called someone. Annie, call the managers. I want to introduce them to the new owner of our bank. <laughs> Look, here he is. Still laughing, Luis Harris pointed his finger at the confused old man and the still dumbstruck Sam. Bank workers started gathering around them. To each of them, Luis told a funny story about a crazy poor man who fancied himself a big-time banker and wanted to take a seat at his office. His story was followed by loud laughter. Only two people were not laughing, Sam Wood and Michael Edwards. Eventually, Sam slapped the desk. You're interfering with my work. I ask everyone to return to their workstations. I can manage this by myself. <laughs> it's too late, Louise scoffed. I've already called the manager. Oh, here he is. Mr. Allen, Luis foolishly stretched out his hand, pointing at the old man with elaborate respect. Let me introduce you to the new owner of our bank. His name is... He got silent trying to recall the name of the poor farmer. The manager helped him. Mr. Michael Edwards. Pardon me, I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. Sorry for my employee's incompetence. I will definitely reprimand them for it. Now, let me show you to your office. There, we can discuss all the details, and you can make your first orders. The bank went so silent that you could hear the streams of air coming through the halls from the air conditioners. What are you talking about? Luis asked the manager. I don't understand how this can happen. You don't have to understand anything, Mr. Allen said gravely, but the old man gestured him to stop. Let me explain everything myself, he said. I'm 70 years old right now, but I haven't always been. There was a time when I was young and full of ambitions. Many, many years ago, I graduated from the economy faculty of one of the prestigious European universities. I had much promise, although my startup capital was not so big. I was sure I would be a peerless one in the banking industry. After coming back home, I started gradually succeeding. I was chasing after my dream, even though I wasn't very rich. And then, something unexpected happened. My close friend got sick, and I couldn't just turn a blind eye to his problem. He was dying, and so was I, seeing him struggle. He needed a kidney, and a lot of money for recovery. What else should I tell you? I gave him both. He was crying and begging me to give up on this idea, but I couldn't act otherwise. I was by myself, whereas he had a wife and three kids. This big family, they didn't want to lose their father and husband. Long story short, I sold everything I had, including my house. And then I went to the hospital and told that I was ready for the surgery. You are looking at me with amazement, but I was ready to give up my heart for him, let alone a kidney. My friend lived a very long life. He died recently. When saying goodbye to me, he told me that I once gifted him his life and happiness. I hugged him and told him that I didn't regret it for a minute. I was happy that everything had happened as it did. But you always wanted to be a banker, he told me. It's okay, Henry, I smiled. I have a small farm. I'm a farmer, and I'm happy with my life. And besides, I don't have much time left. 
No, he shook his head. You have many years ahead of you, the years that you have gifted to me. When I'm in heaven, I'll ask that they are returned to you. That's how my friend passed away, old and happy. And then a miracle happened. His children bought out the shares of this bank and gifted them to me. I was so touched that I cried like a baby. But the kids comforted me and told me that they owe their success to their father always being there for them. That's the story. Unfortunately, I didn't have a proper suit to wear when coming here. But I didn't expect that people would be judged by their appearance here. The stunned bank workers were silent. Luis Harris put his head down so that no one could see him blush with shame. Let me take you to your office, Mr. Edwards, said the manager, and took the new owner away. A few days passed. One day, the director summoned Sam Wood to his office. I heard that your wife is sick. I'm ready to pay for her treatment until she fully recovers. Bring me the medical agreement with the hospital, and I would also like to give you a raise. You do want to be promoted, right? I would be very grateful to you. Sam nodded with tears in his eyes. And thank you for helping my Gladys. She deserves to be happy. All kind people deserve to be happy, Mr. Edwards smiled. Both wealthy and poor. All it takes is to have a human heart just like yours. Not a heart of stone. 